brilliant. Fantastic. So I just wanted to um, welcome people along to this second information session about our Career Pathways in Holistic Health course. Um, I'll tell you more about that shortly. Um, it's a programme that we've been funded to deliver by uh, the WEA through some European money, the last bits of European money, and uh, we're running it in partnership with um, Beauty in the Community, who were on this morning session, but I can talk a little bit um, about them. And people, if they want to hear more about Beauty in the Community, can listen to the other um, webinar, we've got listen again webinar of this. Um, so, but before we get into the course, we thought it'd be great to hear from a range of women who uh, we've been linked to, perhaps supported at different times, or um, been working in partnership with through the Flourish Network. Um, I'd say a good 40 to 50% of the women that we work with have some sort of health and well-being links, if not, you know, more um, through the ventures that they develop, the ideas that they have and the impact they're trying to make. So the idea, hopefully, is just to inspire people on, you know, could I do this? Should I take the leap? Will this course be right for me? And certainly we design this course uh, with people like these women in, in, in mind, you know, if you know, they were just starting out or they were kind of dabbling, tinkering or even developing something that just needed some support around what they were doing to kind of sustain it and make it progress. So I'll come back to the course in a moment, but um, I might ask Karen to go first. She was first in the first I knew room. you were going to say that, Nicole. That's all right. Is that I don't mind. <laughs> so uh, we'll come to Karen and then Debbie and then um, probably come to Louise and then um, Michaela, if that's all right. Yep, fantastic. So far away, Karen, if you want to say a bit about a bit about yourself and a bit about your um, career, I guess, and, and where it's led you and, and how you got yeah. it. Yeah, so um, my name's uh, Karen Harris. I'm currently founder and director of Brain Health Breakthrough, which is a, a peer-led organisation. We provide support for people with brain injury, unpaid carers, uh, people suffering long COVID, we're also developing uh, programs to for professionals and looking at branching out into um, providing stress in the workplace for health and well-being. So it's it's where I currently am is quite an exciting time because I, I feel that we're in a position to really, you know, scale up what what we're doing, uh, I've got the right people around me, I've got the right things in between my head, I've had the right training. So going backwards, it's like, well, how did I get from here to where I was? Like Nikhil has known me for maybe, three, you know, where I was when I three met Three or four Nikhil. years, about three or yeah, four years. Where I, where I am now, to where I was when you met me, is in a very different place. Mm -hmm which is nothing. <laughs> yeah, well, that's that's what I love, that's isn't it? I yeah. <laughs> love seeing yeah, the progress in one minute. You know, I've always been passionate about, you know, helping people, transforming people's lives. I've got a background in um, kind of, you know, counselling, coaching, meditation. Uh, you know, five years ago, I was running, you know, developing my own meditations, you know, really loving that, um, you know, going back, I've, I've always had on the side, and that's it in inverted commas, on the side, a health and well-being practice. And I guess on that journey, where I would say about why I would encourage you to go on a course like the Kayla's, is that yeah, I've been able to develop my craft over the years. You know, I've been able to, you know, deliver what I do. But it's always in the past, it's always been a sideline because I've never been able to sustain that or get a, a full time income. So I've always been doing this on the side one day a week. And then I've been in and out of health and social care, you know, doing all kinds of roles, in and out of adult education, and kind of feeling I was, you know, swinging one, one thing to the other, always very frustrated in the workplace roles that, you the know... Quite public in. sector roles, weren't they, that you've had for what you described? Yeah, I've been in the third sector, yeah. everywhere, 
done everywhere. And it, it's always been, you know, frustrating in, in, in some way. And so for me, uh, what I learned, um, I think through that journey I've had, you know, with the support I got with Unlimited and through Nicola and Flourish and slowly building up my skills is that, you know, I need to be more than being good at my craft. I had to learn, had to learn about finances. I had to learn about what social impact was. And I've had to develop all these skills that I wasn't... Building thinking. blocks to enterprise, really, aren't they? They're kind of building blocks to enterprise, which is partly what we'll, we'll, yeah. we'll look at. Yeah, but I think it's building blocks to running, you know, running a business, isn't it? And being able to sustain that business so that you're in that full time. And, and I think that's why it's important what Nicola does and delivers is that you learn all these things that you need to be able to make what you're doing, um, you know, sustainable. And what I wanted to say is working in health and well-being, when you're working with people, it's not what you do, it's how you make people feel when they leave you, which is, you know, the, the, the important aspect of it. And learning to be able to talk about and speak about you know your impact and what you're doing or the changes you're doing for people you know learning how about you know finances learning how to um you know promote that on social media learning how to uh, work with partners there's all these skills I had to learn well, the, the many funding bids that's you know so, so that that approach and that route you know the social enterprise route may or may not be for everyone that comes through the program and it's only one part of who will be supported but I think you know helping people see that somebody with lived experience who's had a varied career like you have can kind of follow their passion and turn that kind of side hustle yeah. into you know their their full-time work full -time, and that's what I'm doing now I'm working you know, full time at Brain Health Breakthrough. I'm not doing any sidekick cuddles um, <laughs> anymore. And, uh, you know, that, you know, thankfully we've been successful, as Nikayla said, with funding bids. And, you know, it is a journey like how you write a bid, how you put that across. I've been successful now looking at working with partners, as I was saying, to develop a private income, you know, working with other people to deliver things in in the workplace um growing your team now as well sorry and growing your team now as well which you started that's, to do and that's been really key because that you know I've got the skills and I've um uh, I recently uh, was successful with a fund funding in Heimburn and I was able to work you know it helped me uh, develop my team uh, mm -hmm. which is you know been really really key and that's where we're really looking at at scaling up um i am waiting on some funding bids but i've decided with and without the bids you know this this is going to happen and and you know i'm going to do it anyway so, building. Uh, yeah. well i think if, if I, yeah absolutely well that's you know great sort of initial and it's amazing as you said you know three or four years ago you were in a very different place to where you are now yeah. and i think with, yeah. with with what we try and do with these programs it's it's very much a Rome wasn't built in a day kind of approach um, and often you know it's creating the space to think and creating the space to meet people and creating the space to have these sort of serendipity sort of moments that's progress things along and that's what these courses and our, our network is often about so um, thank you for sharing your um, part of your journey so far we'll, we might uh, come back and, and have a good old yeah so I, I to talk about peer support if we go around and yeah, miss that bit out. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, don't worry. No, but there's so much in, in what you do. I think it's yeah. great to just hear that sort of potted uh, sort of history and aspects there. And I'll perhaps come to Debbie. Um, do you want to say a bit about, about yourself? And you, so Debbie, um, I, I did let her know that um, we've worked with Debbie off and on for, for years, ever since Flourish began, really. She's one of our early sort of mentors and then became a mentee um, where we supported with her own venture. And then um, I'm pleased to say just recently, she's come on board as one of our sort of Flourish directors as well. So lots of links in there. But Debbie's got a great sort of interesting angles, you know, showing that, you, you know, 
the, the, the work that you've done as your day job could be completely different to what you might want to pursue um, as a new career pathway, as a following your passion or as making a difference with your sort of um, various sort of skills. So Debbie, tell us more about your journey. I hope I'm not giving things away there. It's not, <laughs> but you know, everybody we work with has got such a different sort of journey to what they do and, and, and you're no exception. So uh, <laughs> Yes, yeah, so uh, so yeah, I'm Debbie Tomkeys. Um, I'm the founder and director of Making Future CIC. Um, I'm also a partner in DC Craft and Design, which is a, a retail company, a straightforward retail company. Um, my my background is actually in accountancy, so for me, the finance side wasn't as big an issue as as perhaps it might be for some. Although, having said that, you do very quickly learn that. There's a big difference between working in an accountancy firm and actually doing your own bookkeeping. It's not nearly as, as interesting, <laughs> you know, like keeping your taxi receipts and your bus tickets. It's really very dull. Um, but yeah, so so I use my so I, I started off um, after I had a brain tumor and um, I decided that you know the world of, of accountancy and the world of kind of that commerce was was interesting, but I wanted to follow my passion. Um, which is creativity. I, I was a knitwear designer um, from being quite young. Um, but again, like, like Karen said, side hustle, very difficult to make a full-time living, very difficult to take the plunge and decide, yeah, I'm going to really give this a go. Um, and I think that's what you get from these sort of courses, really. It's not, just, it's not just what you learn, it's not just what you gain, it's having that amazing network of people around you who can kind of hold you up when you're finding it tough who are there for the questions who are um you know who can say yeah you can really do this you totally can do this um because that's I think perhaps what I didn't have when I first started and that's the course I wish I had had when I started um so I started off with say with a retail company and and went on to set, set up the CIC which is really all about um the well-being aspects uh, of um of creativity really so it's helping people both to um boost their mental health and their self-confidence self-esteem through through creative expression i work mainly in textiles um so craft knitting that kind of thing uh, but then also uh, i work a lot with people setting up enterprises so as michaela said a lot of work mentoring people um helping people setting up their own creative businesses um, if nothing else, I, I, I tend to spend a lot of time telling people how not to do things because that was the mistakes that I made. <laughs> so I share those with people um, as well as supporting them and, and how hopefully helping to put them in touch with my, the people I know, the people I've worked with over the years. Um, yes, yeah, so I don't know what else you need to know from me, Nikkei. <laughs> I guess um, I know Making Futures um, is based in the Trafford area. I guess do you want to say anything about kind of what you I know some of some of that work might have gone on a bit of back burn over COVID and other things, but um, it might be interesting to just hear kind of what made you physically evolve a, a CIC of your own because you've got all these other things. I'm just you know that might be interesting to just hear what you know what made you put two and two together here and make making futures. <laughs> well, I suppose um, obviously. A lot of the business is, is very much online. So it's selling things retail online. But what I was doing quite a lot of was teaching. Um, and I sort of did flirt with the idea of being a teacher at one stage. Spent a little bit of time teaching in my son's school and doing after school and then very quickly decided, you know what, I'm not a school teacher. Mm. <laughs> really not for me. So I had a bit of a lucky escape there. As much as I love working with young people, being a full-time teacher in that respect wasn't for me. Um, but what I did discover was that I did really enjoy teaching as, as a sort of wider context. So I was doing a lot of workshops and working with a lot of community groups um, with young people doing after school clubs and so on. Um, and it was just a logical progression, really. Um, and then the opportunity came up just recently to take a studio, because one of the things that is quite difficult, I think, when you're setting up is finding somewhere to practice your craft. Um, so it's in having um, somewhere that you can kind of, for me anyway, I needed somewhere a space I could call my own where I could bring people and work with them and, you know, and without having to be constantly thinking about, oh, you know, kind of book the space, kind of that space and so on. So I've now got my own craft studio and it's a specialist studios with for artists with um, disabilities and um, artists who are sort of new 
and, and, and kind of upcoming. Uh, so we set up, I was able to set up the CIC, uh, which basically allows me to run these workshops and, uh, and help more people, essentially. Absolutely. thought it'd just be good to sort of give a bit more context on that. So Fab will, um, you know, again, a different, different thing, you know, you're tackling health and well-being and looking at making things through, you know, the craft, the creativity um, and working with different groups as you do. Um, that might flow nicely into um, Louise, if I may, because uh, she'll tell you more about her background and it's a, that there's some overlaps and that, but there's some quite different things as well. So uh, I think... Karen and Deb will get a lot from hearing what Louise has to say. So uh, far away, Louise, you've been on our time. Um, massively so. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Or uh, currently doing um, stone cocoons at the moment. Okay. Well, I'm listening. Um, yeah. So my background is through the arts. Um, I did my art degree. Did, I've done lots of different um, courses in the arts, from ceramics to surface pattern design to fashion to fine art. Um, just I'm always making something or sewing something or painting something um, and that's how I got into like community work so I started doing like youth um, community workshops with young people using the arts as a way to get them just talking really and getting them making things doing things in schools um, they used to have the big arts week some people still do it, some people don't. But what they did was get loads of artists all over the country going into a school and just getting them to do art. And I did like how to make your own cameras and using like pinhole cameras to get them just thinking about things. Um, but I've always been interested in nature, inspired by nature. And I got a full time job. Eventually, I sort of went back to uni and did a postgraduate degree in youth and community work because I'd always done different like part-time jobs in youth work and became a full-time youth worker and it was great I loved it but I missed making stuff and doing stuff and I became quite poorly um just because I think I was doing a nine well it wasn't even nine to five it was like they were nine that's where we met, wasn't it we, we met whilst you were doing that so yeah yeah that's how we met yeah um so it was a bit of a crazy job and it was for the council. And so as you can imagine, as soon as COVID hit, it was all hands on deck. And unfortunately, I just became really, really poorly. And my body was just like saying, no, you can't do it anymore. Um, so I started looking at what do I actually do? Do I go back to the arts or do I not? And I always loved going into nature. And I found I felt a lot happier and a lot better if I went for a walk in the woods. Um, Nature is always important to me. I, I always make sure that I'm looking at a plant or as you can see, the background is the trees behind us and the bushes. Um, and I just did a lot of research on how important nature is. And it's massively beneficial to people's mental health, but also physical health. So if you're trying to heal from something, just looking at a tree can actually speed up your healing time. Um, so. I felt like I wanted to do something around that. And I looked at, in Japan, they actually prescribe forest bathing, which is basically just connecting with a forest, just going into a forest, sitting in the forest, listening to it, smelling it, doing mindfulness and med meditation. And so I spent a lot of my time looking at that, you know, how do we go about that? Um, so we've had a few tr trial events, um, we did one at Duke's Drive, um, which was a great success. Um, <laughs> yeah, and that we, we got some really good feedback from members of the public, um, loads of phone numbers and emails of people that were really interested in finding out a bit more about it. Um, we did another event um, just in Winton Park and did loads of things with families there. But what I'm doing now is I'm in talks with... I don't know if you know Transcendent Studios in Eccles. It's in Bridgewater Mill. Okay. It's quite new age, but I've gone there a couple of times to see them. And we've talked about different things and things that I've been making that has come out of the different things. And we're looking at, they do all like um, crystals and things like that. But what I like is just 
normal run-of-the-mill pebbles you know beach pebbles everyone goes to the beach and picks a pebble up I know we're not supposed to but we all do it and mm-hmm. um, we have these pebbles but we never know what to do with them and when I was at my poorliest my mental health was really bad the only way I could stop myself from really spiraling was to hold a pebble mm-hmm. and so I'm talks with them about actually selling these pebbles but in these like felt cocoons that I make mm-hmm. in them that's it's what I've been doing. It's such a small world. I love having these because although we're like putting this together for, you know, to promote this new course, I know all the threads that link all of you lot together. So it's quite I know. <laughs> There's a, a pebble cocoon. So it's in like a cocoon of felt, oh, no. but it's a pebble and you, you can just hold it and, you know, you've got the grounding of the pebble and the weight of the pebble, but it's soft as well. So it's almost like a, a natural fidget spinner. That's you know it. when kids are like always fidgeting and stuff I like what you've got talking about that is you know in addition to the kind of career pathway and the kind of this this exploration that you've gone on both to support yourself through your own yeah. sort of mental health journey but also coming out this side looking at different routes to earning a living through in addition to the amazing creative yeah. skills and youth work skills you've got there's other yeah. product, there's other products and innovations that can be created there's you know one of the things we'll talk about in, in when we get onto the course when people come onto it is very much about diversifying your, your income streams and how to you know to make a living in different ways because you know as Karen said and others have said trying to do these things on the side can be a real fiddle or um yeah I mean I was very lucky in the fact that I made well, it was kind of it wasn't my decision. It was like a group decision between me, my doctor, my physiotherapist, my employer, and just everyone involved. We were just like, no, I just can't do it anymore. I physically and mentally can't do it anymore. I loved my job. It was my dream job. Mm-hmm. But that's just, a lot. That's a lot to, you know, there might be people who hear this or people who come with us who've been in that position where they've given that much of themselves to the job and then all these yeah. things, but actually it's time for a new chapter or it's time to explore what's important to you so I think that's a really important message as well so yeah I might do just just for time because Lisa's joined us as well so we've got another quick speak well not even quick but another speaker as part of our sort of series tonight um I might um ask Michaela to just say a little bit about herself um and um I've got absolutely time for sort of questions and um sort of connections after um after we've heard from people and talked about the call Mira's, she got a hand up oh no she did have no I think that was earlier so fantastic so um Michaela can I sandwich you in here if that's all right <laughs> and um do you want to say a bit yeah. about yourself and um you know yeah. what you're developing what you know how where work's taken you in previous years and kind of what's led you down your path you're, you're on now Okay. Hi, everyone. I hope you can hear me okay. My name is Michaela, and I'm the founder of HS Action Together, uh, working on becoming a CIC. Um, it's a lot of work, and I've known Michaela for a few years now. I actually set up HS Action Together um, because of the unmet needs I was seeing internationally. The people with a condition I have called hydrogenitis suppurativa. This is what the HS stands for. Um, so basically, I'm using my lived experience and the stories of others to kind of inform everything I'm doing. So sadly, due to lack lack of knowledge about the condition and misdiagnosis and things like that and lack of treatments, et cetera, um, it took me seven years to get a diagnosis, even though I figured it out and I kept going to the doctors armed with journals saying, I have this and being made to feel it was all my fault. I was like, I had chondriacs, it was all in my head. So you can imagine the impact that had on me mentally, not just the condition, but the treatment I was getting from the medical professionals and those around me. So I literally decided I wanted to make a difference. So I went from being completely destroyed to the point where I tried to commit suicide twice because of it. It's very painful and things like that, very scarring. And you'll laugh, I watched Patch Adams and he resonated with me, wanted to make a difference. And I was like, I don't know what I want to do and how I'm going to do it, but I want to help other people. Mm -hmm. So I started doing like GCSEs. And then once I'd got everything I needed, I did an access course. And then I went to the University of Salford and did a biology degree so I could understand the HS scientifically to try and one figure it out for myself and try and help others and maybe open a dialogue between the people with the condition the researchers and the doctors so you went back as a mature student didn't you and I think the thing yeah, is not I enough do. there's probably you know it's a point on this on this program we can signpost people all over but there's probably not enough people who think about or get the opportunity to 
to go back as a mature student for lots of different reasons, not least the time and the cost and the energy, but, um, you know, it's fantastic in itself that you, you know, yeah. you the effort to really research this stuff. Yeah. And, that, and that's kind of led you down a whole new sort of direction as well. Yeah, and I mean, don't get me wrong, my lecturers were phenomenal. I had a care plan in place and I'm not going to deny it. I really struggled and I had to battle my, battle my condition and really work hard to achieve what I needed to. And my lecturers, they just supported me and it was great because I educated them about the condition. I got to pick their brains about scientific topics around this condition. And then in my third year, I had a new lecturer called Dr. Aruma Ochu and it was through her and I, I kind of opened up to her letting her know what I was trying to do and she introduced me to Nikayla and that's how I met Nikayla. I was a third year undergraduate I um, wasn't very confident back then I didn't I did not like public wouldn't speak speaking. you'd never spoken in public you know, I was sort of like the quiet one in the corner so I came down met Nikayla had a good chat with her and we started the ball rolling and she understood I was juggling so much um because I had a, me being me I don't do anything the easy way I actually had a baby at the end of my first year at uni so I was juggling being a new mom my condition trying to develop these business ideas to help other people researching stuff and Nikayla was phenomenal she's like look there's no pressure we'll work completely around you um we can do things online you can do things in person don't worry if you can't kind of attend something we can send you the information out any questions contact me and she's been amazing there was times where we we're like she'd have an event like for me to come to and I was like I'm really sorry my HS is really bad today I can't even walk and I'd be really upset and the killer's like look don't worry about it don't worry we're going to run it again just you know look after yourself we're here for you and that was a big difference and then obviously I'd come to these meetings I'd meet all these other amazing women and that kind of when you like in a rut and you're having a really bad day and you like think oh my god can I do this am I crazy for thinking I can do this you'd meet other people and you'd hear their inspiring stories and it kind of fuel you to kind of continue what you're doing so I literally continued my journey and decided I was going to do a master's part-time online so I did science communication and future media so I've been developing my craft to do like things called citizen science so you kind of you could do research say into this condition what I want to do um and back, backpack journalism mobile media how to navigate social media so I was learning all these skill sets and at the same time I was looking at oh how am I going to kind of turn this into an income stream how can I make this work as a viable business and help people and this is when the Kayla came in with Flourish and the network and they started helping me think of things I hadn't thought before so I'm at the point now where Nikayla's kind of getting all the pennies to drop she's like no you've got this skill set and you haven't thought about you can do this and we sit there and we, we brainstorm and then I might meet someone on the course that has similar ideas with me and we can kind of talk about things and say well this has worked for me and that hasn't worked and and you kind of get input that way and um, so it's been really really good so the next steps hopefully is to kind of start doing workshops and other online things to kind of help people I'm also a patient research partner with a specialist which is amazing so I've got some contacts there and uh, I do a lot of stuff online and um, Sadly, because of COVID, you know, we've, we're all juggling things as parents, being mums, and unfortunately, it all falls on us. So I kind of had to take a step back. Um, but no, I'm getting back into it all now. Things are hopefully getting a bit more normal. But That's no, amazing. I'm looking forward to it. So and I think one of the things... Come on to this. It's, it's amazing. And um, no matter where you are, they'll support you. Oh, thanks, Mike. And I think I was going to say one of the things as well that we can't do for everybody, but we try where there's a neat fit or there's something useful is, you know, if we can spot that somebody's skills can be useful somewhere or they can be getting paid for one thing whilst they're busy doing another um, or that they can be aligning, kind of practising what they need to do, but perhaps practising it for a different social enterprise whilst they're building up their own. Um, that's a, something we've been able to work on with Michaela. And, um, you know, she's now coming in as a, you know, an associate and a support to us with some of our, um, I guess, um, social media, video editing and all sorts. So um, it'll help sort of develop um, your practice, won't it, Michaela, kind of getting read, everything ready for HS um, yeah. actually together. Um, and it means that we can, um, you know, bring people in who we've been supporting to actually, um, you know, get on the, uh, get, get their sort of, their own resources and their own kind of financial buffer built up alongside so um 
I was just going to say, last but not least, uh, if we can, we'll hear from Lisa and then I'll talk very quickly, well, not too quickly, but fairly quickly about this course that's coming up um, and get a feel for whether or not it's going to be right for you. But uh, really glad, Lisa. Thanks so much for dialing mm -hmm. in. And I've kind of, it's been one of those that we set this course up <laughs> and knowing um, whilst, you know, we've got time for people to apply and we've got months for people to apply. I just wanted to get the information out there. Okay. So that's why we brought um, this information session together tonight to kind of, show people uh, perhaps who we've been working with in the past in different ways and, and inspire people and um, so that people have then got the listen again links and another sort of sound bites to inspire them for what they're doing so do you want to say a little bit about yourself kind of where you're at different roles and jobs that you've had and uh, as we all have this kind of hodgepodge of how does this all get me to where <laughs> I am now not not you know we've only got probably five minutes or so but in a nutshell I guess you know, where are you at, where have you been? And, um, you know, uh, I know, you know, from what you do, um, that inspiring and motivating others is a key part of your, you know, your purpose in life. So tell us Definitely. more. <laughs> Hi, everybody. Can you hear me? Yes. Yeah. Great. I've just um, using my new laptop and using my media skills with the laptop. I'm used to using my phone um, oh, and I'm transferring over to be or <laughs> laptop ready so yes I'm glad I've been able to come on apologies for so late no, um, I have been focusing myself today on my online presence so I've been doing a lot of updating on my um, social media profiles and really putting a bit of work in there so I've really spent a good five to six hours really on that today it's been on my to-do list so I'm very very happy that I ticked that off and um, as we know your social media and your online presence is very important and for me, it is always been important. It's the way of networking and connecting and getting my message, really. And my service is out there. So, yeah, that's my focus today. So, hello, everybody. Um, I don't know you all, but nice to meet your faces. I know Michaela, so it's really nice to see your face and hear about your tremendous journey. I know a little bit about it, and it's just wonderful. Hello, my lovely, to <laughs> see your progression and to know you're still persevering and, you know, being determined and pushing through. I look forward to connecting again. Please email me. Mm -hmm. and um, update me on how to connect with you and I guess um, in terms of your own work and your like yes yeah. we met when you were uh, running sort of me I want to call it me one coaching. yeah Back yeah in the day. you'd had a whole career even before getting to that point and then a whole journey after um, Definitely. you want to say a little bit a little bit about some of that just to show yeah. people you know there's more than one way to get these things happening and sometimes definitely. you can step back to move forward <laughs> definitely I would agree um I've been on a long entrepreneurial journey as Michaela's kind of highlighted be very quite brief my background was youth and community work that's what my degree was in I also did um moving forward wanting to get into entrepreneurship I've done a business course and I've developed myself further on from that I done a course a home study course in life coaching a diploma in that and then I've moved on to do information advice and guidance and a whole heap of training and mm. um, workshops and personal development so to speak um, mm. in many arenas to develop myself my skill set and my business really help grow me and my business forward so I've been doing a lot of that I developed my first business which was called ME1 Positive Personal Development Limited which was a personal development and life coaching company for young people and adolescents to help them to think positive to increase their motivation, self-empowerment levels, confidence, and basically increase their achievement levels throughout life. Give them knowledge, skill sets, and tools and techniques to kind of be successful in life. So that was my first adventure. And um, I ran that for about five years. And on my last two years, um, I kind of had a change in business plan where I had a lot of women in business and entrepreneurs wanting to come to me for coaching support and that's where I de decided to redesign and develop my new business which is now called Be Triumph Limited and that's all about supporting and empowering women in business entrepreneurs helping them to have their mindset to be triumph overcome their challenges that they face equip them with the knowledge and the skills and the tools and techniques and the strategies um, to be successful really and to reach their life goals so that's all about mindset coaching. My background is all about mindset coaching. It's all about helping you to change and shift the way you think. And I believe by doing that, you can be more successful and achieve your life goals by reducing some self-limiting you know, beliefs that we have, negative habits. It's so and, important um, with, with, women, with women, especially we find- who Definitely, are... definitely. I can resonate with, um, with, sorry, just for the last two speakers, I'm myself, for the last seven years, unfortunately, um, I've undergone 
experience in a few health conditions that I'm now long-term managing. One of them is fibromyalgia and one of them um, is a nerve and muscle unknown problem that I'm not sure of yet, but they're kind of interlinking for me. So myself has been on a health um, journey, a health how kind of discovery to find out my new self and how I'm going to do things moving forward because it did impact on me mentally, physically. It did impact on me emotionally in business um, over the last three years. Mm -hmm. And it made me have to really take a spoonful of my own medicine in terms of what I give out there. So I had to go back to my own personal training ground and um, redevelop myself internally, mentally to kind of be this new person that I am managing my um, conditions and how that impacts on my daily performance, really. I think in new ways of earning a living, isn't it? It's interesting. We've not picked up yeah. on it, but actually there's a lot of women out there who, yeah. whether various reasons, whether they've had kids, whether they've had different yeah. things in the workplace, yeah. mental health stuff, domestic yeah. abuse stuff, yeah. or just actual, we all get older and like our bodies do these things, <laughs> whether yeah. we like them or not. And you have to Suddenly. change what you do. So, you know, I think there's people who could potentially want to come on this um, course that we're running from, you know, from all those sort of different perspectives where it's like, right, time for rethink, time to change and time to Definitely. look at new ways of, of, of making a living. And Definitely. Um, I know we've been having um, Lisa come on um, and do some coaching on, on the Time to Bow programme, which, yeah. which, is, which has been going down well and I'm hoping to do, to do more of that. So, um I just thought it was great that people would sort of hear another person's sort of perspective. No, definitely. What, what, and you, um, you've, I know because you've talked to me about it, you've, you've also, and in amongst all, everything else, one of the one of the ways that you were kind of chugging through these things and, yeah. and bringing your learning and knowledge together was to, um, you know, write a book as far as I know. You've been in the process of Yes, that. I have. I've been um, thinking about, as, as you've touched on, which I think is a really important message to have different um, income streams, have residual income and passive income. And I know they all take a lot of time and effort and a lot of them do take some financial um, input too, but I have been utilizing my skills and my knowledge and a bit of my life experience and life journeys um, to share my story really um, as an entrepreneur, as a mom myself, and you know some experiences that I've kind of experienced in life, negative and positive. And some of the great people that I've met along the way who have been of support and encouragement and um, just great networking. So, yeah, I've been I'm an up and coming new author that I'm hopefully still working severantly on <laughs> uh, my book to produce. Hopefully my deadline is next year. I have had a few setbacks. I've had writer's block. Mm -hmm. I have been managing two and three part time jobs in between, as you know, as entrepreneurs. Mm -hmm. We're there managing different in sources of income just to help things keep ticking. Um, with the everyday life that's the reality and mm -hmm. um, there's days when business is not giving me my financial income that I need but um yeah keeping myself relevant keeping myself out there and keeping that self-belief and persevering on really and likewise networking with some great like-minded people and just believing in yourself and having that mindset that what all that you are doing is you know in the end to to be successful and to reach your life goals and being in the right places at the right time, I do believe that that will happen. So I'm so happy to have joined on this platform today. Honestly, Michaela, you well, are doing be, fantastic. It'd be great for some bits of Q&A where we've got a chance shortly. Um, yeah. I'm just going to, um, it's interesting where you were saying that, you know, we definitely started off the conversation saying Rome wasn't built in a day with any of these things. And yeah. Kind of reassuring people coming on the programme that, you um, that is our kind of philosophy and often people don't quite know where to start or they're not sure yeah. what they want to do so I'm just going to share some slides about the course that we've got coming up and right. just kind of walk through it um so that people um that's not the one I want to show you um, so that people um that's that's our eventbrite page for people who might want to come on these um sessions but um people will find that through our eventbrite um, I did have a note on it today thank you I've finally joined you and connected so I've okay. really been catching up <laughs> no that's all right and that's it what we do recognize is working with women all the time as um uh, I think it was Michaela said earlier people have to take what they need from some of this stuff and can't always get to everything and we appreciate that and actually having learned from some of the programs we've run we've actually designed this one that's kind of pick a mix on purpose Love <laughs> so that. um so I'll just oh, I'll just I've done it again um, yeah. show you our slides here so that people can get a sense of what's coming up and um, they can get in touch with us um, on the this busy slide does have a, an email address in the middle saying info at flourishtogether.org.uk I'm just going to take a picture if that's okay so I can share this on my networks and then I'll send some links if that's okay absolutely fine so basically in terms of the course um, 
we've partnered with an organization called Beauty in the Community. So Flourish and our kind of uh, sister um, organization, Pop-Up Spa and Retreat, uh, which is an unincorporated association that we run alongside Flourish and I manage the, the both of them. Um, we found over the years that um, support, lots of women work in health and wellbeing and, um, or want to, and, or might need to explore health and wellbeing for their own needs um, and undertaking course like this might just nudge them in the right direction of having a go at this and getting better at their own self-care. Um, Pop-ups, bra and retreats um, has run events and um, holistic therapy events, helping people access sort of health promotion activities. And we've spent a number of years training people up in complementary therapies. Um, and as you can imagine, we're busy enough with Flourish and supporting a network of over, you know, a thousand women change makers across Greater Manchester and the, uh, the North West. And so it was a bit of a godsend really. <laughs> we stumbled across beauty in the community who do all sorts of things that really resonate with what Pop-Up Spa and Retreat is about. Um, so together securing this resource through the WEA has meant that we can uh, work together um, to um, sort of achieve mutual goals and reach out to lots of different people, to hopefully to help them explore, as it says, career pathways. And now that might be in um, community health, holistic health, health and well-being. Um, there's not really a, a right or wrong angle to, to think of this. And we'll have um, people who come onto this course, um, you know, who, who've come from sort of all, all sides of that thinking. Typically, uh, we are looking for people who've perhaps um, currently unemployed, uh, might have been furloughed and looking for new experiences, um, looking for coming back to work after a career break, a break having the kids, or might even be retired and are wanting to kind of, they've got all of this amazing latent knowledge and skills and are wanting to take yeah. them forward. Or like Karen and Michaela there, um, you know, a, a, experts with lived experience who wanted to create systems change really as well within the way health and wellbeing services work. So um, anyone and everything really is, you know, could, could be relevant for this, as well as, you know, anybody who's just always fancied exploring complementary therapies and beauty and, and, and stuff. Uh, we thought between our networks, we'll find people across that spectrum. And the timeline of activities here, as it says, um, you know, is a pick and mix menu of what people might want to get involved with. And they might get involved in all of it, or they might just get involved in little bits. Um, so I'll just quickly walk through what these elements are. So um, obviously today is one of our sort of outreach information sessions. And we have got, we have got a bunch of these um, um, going on. Um, just bear with me, I'm messing, messing. Um, we have got a bunch of these going on um, throughout sort of the next few months. Um, and so I'm just going to get to this slide here. There we go. So we're doing a mixture of these virtual events that people can sort of listen again to. And we will have another virtual session on the 6th of October to take questions and answers and, and, and you know, find out who's interested in the course. Um, but we've got some physical events as well. So we've got one coming up on the 22nd of September in Wigan. We're doing in partnership with Merrick Street Centre. We're hoping to have one in Salford and then um, also get back to Meba um, in, in Manchester because it's a great facility. Um, the, uh, the, the, you know, the quality of the facilities, the staff and the training on that side of the programme, which is all about running an accredited um, uh, beauty and holistic therapy training course um you know is is great and that's a way to come in and find out and see more there um but i mentioned these as well because we'll have people who've been on the a call here and people who might be watching this who might want to come and uh, showcase at these things or give a talk or a demo or a taster so what we're trying to do although we're looking for people who are might fit certain eligibility criteria for the course is make sure that we've got um, all sorts of other opportunities to mix things up a bit and ensure that other people can get wider benefits from the programme. Um, we've then the Career Pathways in Holistic Therapies course. We're doing a couple of these. So this is our kind of catch-all, you know, so we'll do our tasters and our community wellbeing events. And then this will um, hopefully give rise to um, having some people come along and think about a few things. They might be thinking about kind of, you know, what's inspiring them what is it that's wanting to make them take this journey um, and sort of reflect and map on you know where have they been uh, where have they got to where are they trying to get to a little bit like we've talked this this evening but I've got another lady who's on the other webinar this morning people might want to go back and have a look at on the other webinar where Jackie Bailey who's someone we've done some work with before um, has this amazing journaling 
um, techniques. Um, uh, she's she's worked in the public sector. She's run her own businesses, um, and um, she's decided to uh, again go down the journey of developing a health and well-being business, partly focused around sort of coaching and helping people achieve what they want to achieve. And um, journaling, as an example, and, and different retreats are a big part of that. Um, so we're going to have Jackie. Um, walk people through their sort of reflection journeys and, and think about their values and where they're trying to get to um, and give them some tools for kind of clearing the head and making sense of their ideas and where they're trying to get to and um, be that personally or professionally or with a business idea and then you know we'll be discussing needs people's you know where people are what they want and help people think about the right opportunities for them and where to find them partly through some peer support. I know Karen was talking before and, you know, peer networking and peer support is a really powerful tool to just draw out loads of information and expertise. And um, so we'll get that from, from the groups who are there, but also we'll be helping people go through a, some sort of building blocks, to developing um, successful health and wellbeing ventures for people who want that aspect. So they're going to be around sort of 10 till four, one day courses these. Um, and as I say, there's a couple in um, November, We're hoping to have one in North Manchester, one in Stockport. And then um, that then takes us into um, Beauty in the Community, who are going to be leading the, um, uh, as I said, the accredited um, courses they're going to run. We're, we're anticipating these running in January, um, January, February, March. So there's plenty of time to, to find people who might want to come and get involved with this. It might be that we have people who are like, who've done therapies or have been trying to run therapy businesses or maybe currently unemployed unemployed on universal credit or whatever not quite knitted it together just yet who want to perhaps get some additional strings to their bow or, or people who run you know counseling businesses or want to run um, mindfulness stuff but actually learning some other therapies might add an additional sort of income stream for where they where they um, could reach out to or you know complementary sort of packages as part of events um, I say that from our pop-up spa events um, because we know that people start one way and maybe building skills to help bridge a wider sort of um, series of services that they can offer. So that's again why we put this course in. Um, it's aimed at people who are going to be starting out at this um, and getting people up to um, most likely level three accreditation. So people will be able to enter the workplace in sort of salons, beauty therapy um, um, spaces, set up as self employed. Um, or other stuff and and as Amy who's going to be running this course said this morning you know there's all sorts of opportunities out there and um, there's also tutoring and teaching this stuff so there's different pathways from having learned this stuff um, in its own right either for personal development um, get, going into that as a as an employee as a paid role somewhere setting up your own thing or or teaching it so those are the sorts of um, areas that they'll be talking about and then for people who might have done this stuff before or as a progression route for the people that come on, uh, we're going to um, run probably four one day courses and we're going to be listening to what people want and need. But, you know, we've got all sorts of people to get our hands on. So whether it's aromatherapy, things like Indian head massage or what, anything and everything, really, we've got specialists who can train people in, in accredited ways um, or more specialist beauty treatments, um, beauty in the community and the people who come on the programme will um, you know co-design you know what's going to come next with that and that will all come to light over the coming months and um, so that's that part um, in addition you know what we found um, and as Lisa was saying before personal branding getting your message out there getting your marketing and communications and it's all well and good or supporting people to develop themselves develop make, whether it's a social enterprise or whether it's learning um, holistic therapies or whatever else being able to um, package yourself up, market yourself, um, or go into a workplace and be able to do this is, is really important. So we have a really amazing network of women that we've supported over the years who deliver all of this stuff. So why wouldn't we bring them in and partner with them to, to do this? So um, we've got a one day podcasting course um, with Vic Turnbull from Mike Media um, that we'll deliver. Um, we've got marketing and branding using Canva and self-branding um, that we'll have with... Um, um, uh, Vicky from uh, Belton Wigan. Um, we're going to be looking at doing sort of uh, video content planning, design and editing so that people can start to, and don't get me wrong, we're not going to necessarily turn everybody into a YouTuber, but particularly for those people who are learning complementary therapies, let alone people like Karen and others who use a lot of online uh, tools to be able to carry out their webinars, do talks, do training online, 
um, or um, you know inspire motivate or whatever um, knowing how to do that and being able to do it will be key and especially because there's so much uncertainty around how is our new normal looking and a lot of people are now wanting more online training support and information and um, being able to support people so that they can keep earning a living online even if you know we end up on lockdowns or anything else and particularly the sort of beauty and um, holistic therapies world is quite a key part of that we've got a lady called claire worthington from the village web company who's going to come and teach people how to and put their own websites together and that's part of what she does is a wide range of digital skills development um, and uh, we've got yellow jigsaw coming to look at um, social media training and also journalistic media and PR so there's a lot in there and people could just come and do that as a standalone course if, if nothing else is floating your boat but you actually want to develop some digital skills there's a really good menu of, of courses here for people to pick up um, and um, you know boost their skills or develop these skills to think about where they want to go next. Um, and then last but not least, um, we've got in the spring towards the end when we've scooped up various people and they've all done various parts of this program, um, there'll be some who still want some additional enterprise support or self-employment uh, options thinking. And so we'll be able to talk to people and walk them through, the, the, you know, re-walk them through the building blocks to that. Because what you find is you learn stuff on a course and it's like, oh, it goes over your head a little bit. And it's only when you kind of come back to actually need it, you can digest this stuff. And um, so it's an opportunity for people to kind of get a refresher on how you do all this stuff or, or fill your knowledge and skills gaps at that time. So that's really, in a nutshell, what we're going to be doing with this course. Um, we think it's quite exciting. We're, get, we're getting positive feedback from the, from the programme itself. And um, we're really interested to hear from people who want to um, come and find out more or come on it. Um, so I will sort of leave this slide there. I'll stop our recording now. And as I've said, if people want to hear more about it, they've just got to get in touch with us. Uh, we are on you know, Facebook and, and Twitter and everything else, um, or they can just you know, have a look at us through our website, but more than happy to um, talk to people about what they want to do, and what they want to get out of the programme, and me or my colleague um, Shelley, who's our programme development and support coordinator, who again was on the call this morning, will be able to uh, signpost you to the right bits. Um, so I hope that's been useful, and uh, I hope that we get a really good, interesting bunch of people um, who want to come and, and, and learn and, and connect and um, develop develop themselves really and make a difference where possible so thanks for listening